Hello, welcome to Wildwood in Kent and welcome to our conic horse talk. The horses here tend to get a little bit overlooked by visitors. I'm going to try and set that straight by telling you a little bit more about them. So let's introduce them. Here at Kent we have two horses on site, one male and one female. The female is called Skylar. She's the elder of the two. She was born in April 2007. The male is Orion, spelt with an A, not an O. He was also born in April, but in 2010. Both their names come from Greek legend and are connected to Poseidon, god of the sea. Skylar was one of the horses who pulled his chariot, while Orion was one of his sons, who was also a horse. Orion and Skylar are a breed of horse known as the Conic. Originally from Poland, Conics are strong and stocky horses with a relatively small head, a low neck and a deep chest. Conics are quite short by horse standards. They stand 1.3 to 1.4 metres at the shoulder or 12 to 13 hands if you prefer. Their coat is a rather unusual and distinctive colour called blue dun, but most people refer to it as mouse grey, and their manes are rather thick and floppy. Those two final features, the coat colour and the mane, are often seen in older breeds of horse, such as the Icelandic pony and the Norwegian fjord horse. Horses are almost deceptively different to most other hooved mammals. For starters, there's their teeth. If you look at the skull of many hooved animals, uh, like those of sheep, goats, cattle or deer, this is a sheep skull, they do not have teeth on the upper part at the front of the skull. Never. None. Instead, the lower teeth reach up to what's known as the dental pad. But with horses, it's very, very different. If you look at a horse skull, you instantly see great big incisor teeth at the front. Also, if you look at the shape of a horse skull, it's quite long and narrow. Horses are what's known as specialist feeders. They're fairly choosy about what plants they're picking and eating. Another difference lies in their stomachs. Most hooved animals are ruminants, meaning that they have a stomach divided into sections that allows them to digest plants very, very efficiently. Horses don't. Horses are like us. They have a single chambered stomach. And that means that their poo has lots of plant material in it. But that's good for their surroundings. It means that lots of nutrients are being returned to the soil. A clue to why horses are so different lies in their hooves. As a group, hooved mammals are known as the ungulates. They take their name from ungule bones, which are the final bones of a finger or toe that has a nail, a hoof or a claw on it. But the ungulates are a really big group with many divisions. When you look at a horse's hoof, it's in one single piece. But the ruminants all have cloven hooves, meaning that their hoof is in two separate parts. Horses are perissodactyls, meaning odd-toed ungulates. Horses have one toe per foot, rhinos have three toes per foot, and tapirs, they have three toes on the back foot, and four toes on the front foot. 
In contrast, the ruminants are artiodactyls, meaning even-toed ungulates. As well as sheep, goats, cattle and deer, artiodactyls include the antelopes, the giraffes, the camels and the llamas. Why do we have horses at Wildwood? Well, for starters, horses used to live in Britain, but not domesticated horses, wild horses. They were here in the Ice Age, in both the warm times and the cold times. And we know this from fossils like this one. This is a leg bone of a prehistoric horse. Similar fossils are found right the way across Britain, from Whitstable here in Kent, up to Cresswell, I can't even say, it, Cresswell Crags in Derbyshire, and even on the bottom of the North Sea, which was once a wide, flat, open plain. Certainly, horses were here after the last retreat of the ice sheets, along with other large plant eaters, such as red deer, wild boar, and the aurochs. Uh, they were the ancestors of the modern day cattle, but they grew as large as rhinos. We're not sure when the true wild horses died out in Britain. Some experts believe they were gone by the late Stone Age, the Neolithic. Others think they may have survived into Roman times. Certainly the wild horses survived much longer in Europe, where they became known as the tarpan. The oldest written record of tarpans comes from 1771, but by that time they were already in decline due to hunting, habitat loss and interbreeding with domestic horses. Officially, the last known tarpan died in a zoo in Russia in 1909, but it's suspected that that individual was a crossbreed and that the true tarpans were already extinct. Okay, interesting, but what's this got to do with conics? In the early 1920s, an agricultural scientist called Professor Tadius Vecilani was studying some particularly hardy horses in the Bilgorin area of Poland. He noticed that some foals were born with similar coloration to the tarpans such as mouse grey coats, striped legs and dark manes. He also observed that these foals turned whiter in wintertime, which was another feature seen in the tarpans. Vecilani suspected that the farmers had interbred their stock with local wild horses, meaning that those foals were direct descendants of the tarpans. He christened them conics, which means little horses. And in 1936, he opened a forest reserve for them in Poland. Vecilani believed that allowing the conics to live wild in their natural habitat would lead to true tarpans eventually re-evolving. Sadly, Professor Vecilani was wrong. Modern DNA testing shows that conics are no closer to tarpans than any other domesticated breed of horse. However, thanks to Professor Vecilani, we now have a type of horse very similar in form to those ancient tarpans. Sturdy, self-sufficient and semi-wild. And that's where Wildwood gets involved. A key part of Wildwood's mission involves rewilding which is restoring habitats to their natural states in terms of animals, plants and their management. Wetlands are particularly rich, diverse places, but over time they gradually silt up and turn into woodlands. 20 years ago, the solution would have been to get conservation volunteers in to pull up tree seedlings by hand. But that is very disruptive Lots of humans trampling about means lots of noise, lots of disturbance, and lots of flattened plants. Today, we're more likely to take a look at the original ecosystem to see if there are animals missing that would do the same role with less damage. 
Conic horses are brilliant in wetlands. By horse standards, they have quite broad hooves, which spreads their weight and stops them sinking into mud. Other animals are not bothered by them. They remove the tree seedlings by eating them, and their poo adds a real boost to local creepy crawlies, which are in turn fed on by fish, frogs, and birds. I should mention that although we only have two horses here on site, Wildwood looks after around 20 other conics who are out on nature reserves around Kent and further afield. Skylar and Orion act as ambassadors for this remarkable breed, so we hope you get the chance to see them both when you visit us here at Wildwood. Thanks for listening.